Whether you're looking to buy photography gifts for yourself or you've got a friend or loved one that you're looking to buy for, this video is gonna take a whistle-stop tour through 10 great gifts that you can buy for someone who loves photography. Now I'm recording this right before Christmas, so time is of the essence. The idea is this video will still be relevant all year round, so that if you've got a birthday or another special occasion coming up, or of course you wanna treat yourself as the photographer in the family, then hopefully, some of this video will give you some inspiration on what to buy. Number one on my list is a camera strap. Now you might be thinking most cameras do come with straps already included, and that is true, but what if it's become damaged or you just fancy changing it up a bit? If you wanna also personalize your camera or maybe just upgrade your strap to something a bit more comfortable, a bit more stronger, or something more um, suitable for the type of photography that you do, then a new strap can make for a great gift. One such example, obviously if you follow this channel regularly, you'll know that most of the content I produce is around sports photography. And so the Black Rapid Sport Breathe Strap is a really great upgrade if you're looking to give a gift to a sports photographer that you know. It does have a little additional padding on it, so that makes it really good for those heavier lenses that you may well be carrying around with you. It's a little bit more sturdy and rugged perhaps, and it almost allows the camera to dangle off the side a little. Ideal if you're using two bodies and you kind of want to have one attached to you, but maybe not weighing heavily around your neck. Another brand you might want to check out is Peak Design. They do a great range of different straps, and I've had quite a few of these recommended to me over the last 12 months, actually. The Peak Design Slide Strap is a really popular one. I nearly picked one of these up when I was looking to get a new strap for my Canon 1DX Mark II just a few months ago, but in the end, I managed to find a spare strap that I somehow had at the bottom of a case, which has done the job just great. But there's plenty of different brands on the market producing all sorts of different types of camera straps. Also, if you wanna check out maybe an Etsy or some camera stores, they'll do them. You can also get them personalized, maybe embroidered with a name, possibly a logo. So again, if someone is self-employed photographer or maybe you just wanna personalize the strap with their name on, then that might be a great idea to do. Although leave yourself a little bit more time in the run up to the birthday or Christmas in order to get that turned around. Number two on my list is the good old fashioned mug. Now, coffee cups and mugs make for great gifts, and we've probably all been given one at some point in the past. When it comes to photography, there are a great number available. Obviously, most people will have seen, or if you're a photographer, you probably will have seen or been bought the lens mug that you can get that's like a retro lens that you can obviously fill with coffee, and it looks very, very realistic to be like a lens. If you want something a little bit different, there's a few designs I've noticed online that are kind of quite retro, retro brands like the old Canon or Nikon logos, or you can go down the path of maybe getting your favorite photo or the photographer who you're buying for their favorite photo printed onto a mug to gift them at their next big event. All right, number three is almost certainly something that would make a great little stocking filler, certainly on the lower end of the budget. It's what every photographer needs, and it's quite boring to buy, and it's a cleaning kit. Some of the best presents you can get for anyone are things that are functional, things that'll save them money down the line, and things that are just practical that they need, even if they don't think in that moment they need it. And a cleaning kit is something that I don't think any photographer would ever turn the nose up at. I use a whole load of wipes, those little lens wipes by Rice, or Reich, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm afraid, as well as different cleaning kits I've had down the years with blowers and different types of brushes and things included with them. They're a great investment. You can get them from literally, depending on what you're buying, some kits start at £10 and under and available on Amazon, meaning if you've left it to the last minute, you can probably still get next day delivery, delivery if you're a Prime member. And they do go right up to much more expensive kits with all sorts of other bits and bobs in them and nice fancy cases and what have you. But cleaning kits are certainly something to look at if you want maybe a little stocking filler or something a little bit chunkier, more practical for that photographer in your life. Okay, the next one on my list is something I've seen recommended in a few places and I think it is actually a really cool idea. And it takes us a little bit back to the 90s 
when I was a child or even earlier to the age of the disposable camera. Now, when I was a child, I remember taking these things on holiday. I think my mum and dad would pick them up for a few pounds from a photograph shop or a supermarket, wherever here in the UK. And you could take them back when you get back off holiday and get the snaps developed and printed out for you. Now, why would a photographer want one of these, you may ask? Well, we're in this age where we've got so many settings on our cameras that we, we play with. And you know what, you might be a little bit guilty of just forgetting the beauty of pointing and shooting a camera to capture what's in front of your eyes. And so a disposable camera, if you can get one cheap enough, it'd make a great little stocking filler. Although I have seen that these are almost classed as like a retro gift now, and the prices of some are really a little bit balmy, to be honest. But a lovely refreshing gift, little disposable camera, have a bit of fun, point and shoot, and see what they can do without the big fancy mirrorless or DSLR camera. Next on my list is books. And this is a really broad area and I apologize for that, but it's gonna be very dependent on what, if you buy for yourself, what you like or the photographer you're buying for what they like. But when it comes to photography as a broad topic, books is a great area to discover. Now, whether you want manuals and instructional books like about a certain niche of photography or even a beginner's guide, how to get into photography, those types of things, there are a ton of books available in your local bookstore, if you're lucky enough to still have one near to you, or on the likes of Amazon or wherever you buy your books. Further than that, there are great books released by photographers every year. I'm obviously within sports photography. I see loads of great books released with some great works and, and topic areas. For example, ones I've seen are around like football stadia in the UK and certain weather conditions and night photography at stadia and all that kind of thing. There are some great books out there. Some have some commentary with them, so there's a bit of reading. Others are primarily just photo books. And that leads me on, they're a little bit of money, in fact, they're a lot of money, but those big coffee table photo books are like that thick that you see in your specialist bookshops or online. Now these are done by travel photographers, by wildlife photographers, by all sorts of different types of photographers who often are really at the top of their game. And they make for really great statement pieces to have in your living room or in your studio if you're lucky enough to have one, or just as a great gift to have on a shelf. These come in all different shapes and sizes, these big photo books, but they are quite spectacular and would make for a great gift. And the other element to them, not just for looking at, but if you're in a bit of a rut or you wanna provide a bit of inspiration, actually looking at other photographers, especially those who have work at a really high level and have had these books produced, looking at those books can actually provide a load of inspiration for actually refreshing what you do try in some of their techniques they use or even try in a new niche of photography altogether. So books is something definitely you should be considering. Okay, next one on this list is a camera bag. Now this is a little bit of a gray area because if you're a professional or the person you're buying for is a professional photographer or even semi-professional, um, they might need a certain type of bag that's certain size, can support a certain amount of weight if they've got a lot of gear, is mobile, it's waterproof and all the shock proof and all the other different types of things you can imagine. For those types of bags, you're probably gonna need a little bit of input from them as to what they want or what they're looking for. And you'll also be looking probably over a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars, right up to a few hundred pounds of dollars, depending on what it is you're after. If however, your photographer or yourself is down more towards the amateur range or just does it as a bit of a hobbyist or whatever, then there are a load of bags you can get off the likes of eBay and Amazon and from your local camera stores that aren't maybe the big brands, don't have some of the features, waterproof maybe, or on you know, mope, don't have wheels or whatever they may be. Maybe the features are stripped back a little bit, but it in turn makes it a little bit more affordable and without kind of um, skimping on having a place for your laptop, having different spots padded for different lenses and bodies to go into. So certainly have a look for camera bags. If your photographer or yourself is at that end of the scale where they do need something a little bit bigger and you don't know what that is, maybe scale back slightly and think about protective cases for other bits of equipment. I've had a couple of memory card cases down the years. The one I've got now I absolutely love. It is waterproof. Um, I am quite a clumsy person. I drop it frequently when I'm at football matches and it's hitting concrete uh, in stands or falling off hoardings or whatever and it protects those cases. They're nice and um, firmly fitted in. So things like memory card cases can also fit in to this kind of area as things to look at. 
Next up, and this goes a little bit like the cleaning kit by way of it's not that exciting, but it is actually really useful and really practical, and that is external hard drives. Now, if you are anything like me or the person you're buying for, as a photographer, I don't like to delete any images, and the downside of that is that I need an absolute ton of storage space to house all of the imagery I take in any given football season, let alone any stuff I do with my family or I go out exploring, doing a bit of different types of photography. So external hard drives are really useful and I must have about 10 of them now, just stack full of photos going back years and years and years so that I've got them backed up and I always know where to find them. Again, depending on who you're buying for, it could be that you can get a 50 pound, half a terabit hard drive from an online store like Amazon or if you're in the UK, any of the big photography stores. Or maybe you need something a little bit bigger if, for example, you want a NAS drive or you've got a NAS drive and you want kind of a duplicate drive to back everything up to, then obviously the cost of those will be at a different end of the scale. But in terms of something that is really useful and really accessible, I could go to probably three stores within a five minute drive of my front, front driveway and get um, an external hard drive that's like a terabit in size cost 60 or 70 pounds, I could have it literally today if I wanted to. So a really functional and practical gift, not the most exciting, but will almost certainly save time and money for that photographer at some point in the near future. All right, next up is a Joby Gorillapod tripod. And these are brilliant. I wanted to include them on the list because I've used a couple of them for many years. I need to get myself a new one for my DSLR actually. And they're just really good. They're those little tiny bobbly looking tripods that you see that you can kind of bend around and, and sculpt onto anything so that you've got a nice um, rigid tripod, if you like, or, or um, place your DSLR to be screwed into or your mirrorless camera in order to get some shots. This is great if you're out and about and you want to do something maybe where your camera's hanging off a, a fence or a tree or something like that. The Gorilla Pod will clamp around it, support your camera nice and sternly on top and be able to get that shot that you want. Additionally, you can also get them in all sorts of different sizes and weights, so please, before you buy it, just check what weight you need for your camera. The higher end of the scale, I've seen these are not quite, but get near now to 100 pounds or 100 dollars, probably around the 70 to 80 mark at this point. Also, even if you're watching this and you're just a bit of a hobbyist photographer, and you also like to do some photography with your phone, for example, or do some video with your phone, that's what I use a lot of, um, is my phone to take video for my match day vlogs that you may have seen. Then Joby also do a like Gorilla Pod for your mobile phone, your smartphone, and that is really, really useful. I say I've got one, I use it all the time, and they come in at I think about 20 pounds or 20 dollars at the moment. So again, both ends of the budget scale, but a really, really useful gift, and one that can actually help your photography a lot if that is something that you need. Okay, the penultimate gift on this list is one that I've seen a few times but never actually looked up to buy until a couple of weeks ago, and that is a lens cap saver. Now, as this photo shows, it's basically a little piece of string with an attachment at each end. One end clips onto your lens cap and the other onto your camera body. So, like I said earlier, I'm quite clumsy. If you drop lens caps like I do frequently, um, this might be a great thing for you because what it'll do is it'll keep that lens cap attached to your camera at all times so that when you've finished shooting you don't have to go searching around in your pockets like I do or even looking on the floor to see where your cap is because it's always going to be attached to your camera ready to just slot back on the front. Now I've been shooting professional football here in the UK for about 10 years now and I've probably found over the years quite a number of lens caps at pitch side that people have forgotten or they've fallen out of bags or whatever or pockets when photographers have moved and walked off. So something like this can actually be really useful and they're really, really cheap. So a great little stock and filler. You can get them for, I think, five or six pounds here in the UK, probably about the same in US dollars. And last but not least, if you've left it to the last minute or you just don't know what to buy, but you do want to give the gift of something photography related, then gift vouchers are a really good option. Now, in terms of the time element, many places will sell gift vouchers online, meaning you can buy them and fulfill them digitally, meaning you don't actually have to have a gift card or a voucher, so um, that works really well. If, like me, you're really forgetful and forget to buy someone a birthday gift or whatever until the day or two before. Now, where should you buy them for? So if you're in the US, a big camera store like Adorama, I would imagine will have 
gift vouchers or gift cards as, as you guys in the US might call them. Here in the UK, all the big stores, London Camera Exchange, Wex, Fords, all those types of places will almost certainly have vouchers as well that you can buy. Alternatively, you can go a little bit more broadly and get vouchers for something like Amazon. Bit of a shame for your local camera store if you do that, but what it does do for the recipient is it allows them to buy any number of things, whether it's some photography accessories that are sold on there that vary across memory cards, tripods, bags, um, covers, you name it, are available on Amazon. Or you can go and get some of the other things I've covered on here, such as a lens cap saver, the um, external hard drive and the other bits and bobs. So gift vouchers are a great way to really give a gift that that photographer or yourself will really love and find great useful. And that's it, I hope that's helped. It was a really quick whistle stop tour through some great gifts to hopefully give you a little bit of inspiration next time you're buying a gift for a photographer in your life or yourself. Thank you for watching, please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next video.